not yet. Uh, I don't know. My PC start not responding. Hello? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it just started to hang and then uh, it restarted itself. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, I can. Yes, can. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish off where I finished last time. So last week, we look at the uh, Mandelin, Mandelin inheritance. Might as well go through everything. <coughs> So we look at DNA uh, damage, we look at introduction to uh, genetic diseases, and then we look at the different categories of genetic diseases. Okay, So remember, you have uh, aberration at chromosomal level, which give rise to chromosomal diseases, and you have the single G disorders or monogenic uh, disorders or multifactorial disorders, and of course, um, briefly, uh, um, we look at mitochondrial disorders, which we will not touch uh, in detail in this course. And then we look at uh, certain examples, especially on Mendelian disorders, and we look at Mendelian inheritance of uh, monogenic disorders. Okay, <clears throat> and then I went through uh, the Mendelian inheritance of monogenic disorders, the types, um, autosomal dominant disorders, autosomal um, recessive disorders, <clears throat> and then um, we're going to look at um, X-linked disorders um, today. Okay, so um, X-link, as you know, is uh, related to um, autosome, okay? Right? No, it's not. It's sex chromosome X. Nobody actually correct me on that. Uh, are you here, by the way? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay. For X-linked disorders, we look at dominant inheritance first. So X-linked dominant <coughs> inheritance, for, for this particular type of inheritance, they're known to be rare and, of course, difficult to distinguish from um, the dominant form of autosomal inheritance, except that affected males have normal sons, but all daughters are affected. Okay, This is because of the X-linked. Uh, uh, X link um, disorders linked to the X chromosome. So examples include Akari syndrome, Red syndrome, and vitamin D resistant rickets. Now recessive inheritance, uh, the inheritance pattern can be listed as below. Okay, this is dominant. This is in uh, uh, recessive. So many more males than females show recessive phenotype. The disease is transmitted by a carrier female who is usually asymptomatic. Why do you think uh, the disease carried by a carrier female? Because a uh, female has two X chromosomes. Mm -hmm. So if they have like one, they become mm. a carrier. Mm, correct. And of course, here many more males, females show recessive phenotype. Correct. So if a mother is a carrier and her sons have 50% chance of being affected and her daughters 50% chance of being carriers. Okay. So sons affected because you only have one X copy, uh, one copy of the X chromosome. Uh, so an, an affected male usually have no affected offspring, but all his daughters will be carriers. Okay, how is that possible? Because you see, remember the affected male has one X copy, so his daughters will be carriers because he will be going to pass one X copy or, or the affected copy to the daughters, assuming that he's marrying um, a normal female. No sons of the affected male will inherit the gene. Why is that the case? Because 
no sons were affected. One, no sons of the affected male will inherit the gene. Because the X chromosome must be inherited from the mother, and mm, the correct. son will inherit Y chromosome from the father. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's correct. So affected males may have unaffected parents, but you often have affected maternal uncle or cousin. Okay. So molecular basis of X link uh, recessive inheritance. So males XY have only one chromosome. So they are hemizygous. So since males receive only one copy of X link genes, <coughs> except for those in pseudo autosomal region, what is pseudo autosomal region? It's present in the both uh, chromosomes. That's uh, like it mimics uh, when it does the. It's like it does like the autosomal chromosomes in X chromosomes. So they are at the end of the uh, sex chromosome, right? Ah yes. Okay. So the marriage. Correct. So um, the X link gene they will express any X link recessive trait because they do not have a compensating water allele. Okay, compensating water allele. Um, Remember, we talk about dosage compensation uh, in X chromosome. What are the mechanism of dosage compensation in uh, in biology? Can anybody name a few? Down regulation. Mm -hmm. And then? Uh, X uh, hyperactivation. Mm -hmm. And inactivation. Mm, okay. Uh, you've been studying? <laughs> yes, Dr. Yeah, very good. Um, so to compensate for the double complement in females, you have X chromosome activation, which makes sure that that particular X genes only express from one of the two chromosomes in the given cell. Remember, that process of inactivation is random basis. So uh, if you want to remember why it's random, just remember the, the cats that I mentioned just uh, last time, you know, the cats have different kind of uh, fur color and because that happens on a random basis. Otherwise, you have a very evenly patterned cats, but no. Okay. So the selection of an X chromosome for inactivation within a specific cell is random. But once established early in development, that is remitted to that particular daughter cell. So remember, um, that process is random, but when it's fixed, it would transfer to the same one. Okay. So females do not tend to show X link recessive disease because many of their cells are there. Can you continue this? Many of their cells? Mm. Find out, huh? I purposely did that. Okay. Now, X link recessive inheritance again. Females can be affected with X link recessive condition in the following situation. Okay, in, in the following situation. So, if she is the daughter of an infected male and a carrier female. Uh, that is a problem, okay? Because uh, affected male will give you one X, a carrier female will give another X. If there's a skewed linearization of a non-disease or normal X chromosome, what is linearization? Uh, we covered this before. What is linearization? Is it uh, X inactivation? Yes, uh, well, yes, yes, uh, uh, part of dosage compensation. So remember, we covered this in lecture. We also covered this in one of your uh, clicker quiz. So if that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, if that is X chromosome autosome translocation and if you have the syndrome is present. Now, examples of x link recessive conditions include uh, G6PD H deficiency, hemophilia A, uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and Fabi's disease. Um, you may be surprised that this G6PD H deficiency can affect a number of people. I know that a friend of mine a couple of years back found out that um, uh, his baby had this uh, G6PD H deficiency. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it looks like you don't see this before, but between these four, the top three is something which is uh, very uh, familiar. Okay, this is G6PTH deficiency. This is an uh, uh, enzyme deficiency, okay, metabolic enzyme deficiency. Um, what is hemophilia A? What is hemophilia? Blood disease. What kind of blood disease is this? Hemophilia A. Uh, blood clotting. 
lack of blood clotting factor. Ah, uh, what kind of blood clotting factor? Blood clotting factor eight. Ah. Huh? Uh, the clotting factor eight. The. Ah, uh, sorry. The what? The what? Come on. Uh, blood clotting factor A. Okay. okay. Uh, I, when you give that kind of answer, you know, hemophilia A, okay, what kind of blood disease? The easiest way is to see what kind of, of disease this is, meaning that it's a blood disease. And what disease this is caused? Because it, hemophilia is basically you do not have the ability to uh, un, uh, to 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 mount blood clot, correct? Blood clotting. So meaning that um, maybe some of you said about can hear, but basically, yes, you have deficiency of uh, blood clotting factor, and this is something that when you when you bleed, you won't be able to uh, uh, clot, and that is can be well, that can be um, uh, fatal if depending on the size of the wound. So when you give answers, and when when people ask what kind of disease, you give yes the etiology of the disease and what you can observe with the disease. Meaning that in this case, patient will not be able to blood clot. So the impact is that you don't have uh, blood clotting, and of course that can be del deleterious for uh, the patient itself. Okay, why link inheritance? Uh, while in inheritance, since only males have the Y chromosome and only males can pass um, the Y chromosome to offspring and only male offspring can receive it. Okay, uh, so the Y chromosome is inherited with no interchromosomal genetic recombination. Why do you think that Y chromosome do not have interchromosomal genetic recombination? Why it doesn't have uh, interchromosomal genetic recombination? Anyone? Come on, it's not a difficult question. Because, because X no and Y crossing over. Occurs. Okay, one by one. Who want to say first? Yeah, same so, answer with it, huh? Hmm? No crossing over between X and Y chromosome. It uh what? No crossing over between X and Y. Uh, why is that the case? They are different. Okay. One is long and short. Correct. So you can only have crossing over when you have between homologous chromosome. So if you have crossing over, then only then you can have recombination. So you cannot have a uh, 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 crossing over or recombination between X and Y chromosome. They are not homologs. Okay. So that's why they need those two autosomal region just so that for them can pair. So the impact is that if you allow recombination to occur between X and Y, that will be disastrous, meaning that we're going to have serious problem when it comes to uh, sex de determination and other features. So that's why they, they, they're not going to uh, undergo any um, recombination between themselves. Okay. Now the Y chromosome contains genes for determining maleness. So this is something that we, we discussed before. So SRY, TTF, and uh, DAZ. Correct? Is this correct? Yes, doctor. Okay. What is the name of the gene that's available on the um on the uh, X chromosome, the but is also needed um, for 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 maleness. 
TFM. Sorry? TFM. What is TFM? What is it's it called? What what does it do? It it uh it, it produce some sort of um, receptor TF uh, TD uh, TFM receptor that will combine with testosterone, mm -hmm. and it produce a um, a, a receptor a complex so that it can stimulate the male secondary sexual characteristics. Okay, so remember when you have the F, you do, when you have the FM, it's always something also to do with um, all the other genes that you have. Um, so if you produce testosterone and you don't have the FM, you won't be able to produce um, what? Yes, now receptor. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so mutations on any of these uh, genes that reside on Y chromosome will result in azospermia. So males with mutation in the SRY gene, as well as having fertility problems, also have short stature. Now, um, okay, also have short stature, but you don't go around and saying that uh, short male, they have SRY gene mutation eh? <laughs> and will have fertility problem. No, that is not the case. Um, this is generally teachers observe. Okay, uh, don't, don't go around saying that short male uh, are infertile. Okay. Genetic heterogeneity. <clears throat> so this is a phenomenon by which you have similar or identical phenotypes arise by different genetic mechanisms. Genetic heterogeneity. So mechanisms include different allelic mutation in the same gene or mutations in different loci or involving different genes. So such orders might, but will not necessarily show more than one mode of inheritance. So you have CMT is usually inherited in autosomal dominant manner, but autosomal recessive and XT dominant also exist. Allelic heterogeneity is different mutation in the same gene, which result in different phenotypes. So this is important cause of clinical variation. For example, if you have specific mutation within the CFTR gene and associated with pancreatic insufficient form of cystic fibrosis. So CFTR gene, co uh, uh, the mutation to this gene will lead to cystic fibrosis. So if you have specific mutation in here, uh, it can also cause other form of, 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 of expression for that particular disease. So different mutation in the same gene may result in different phenotypes. So this is again another example because it, it, although it's early heterogeneity, you know, the different mutation on that particular um, gene, this is also an example of what? In terms of diseases, we covered this last time in non-Mendelian inheritance. I gave an example of polydactyly. Marfan syndrome? No, no. Uh, what is this? You have the mutation, the gene, but it has different forms of or severity of the disease. Expressivity. Expressivity. expressivity yes expressivity you know expressivity even though you have that particular um uh, mutation that particular gene you can express different variant of of the disease depending on what kind of mutation in this case though uh cftr gene so local heterogeneity is a situation where mutation at two or more distinct loci can produce the same or similar phenotype uh, example, retinitis pigmentosa may result from mutation in different genes, including rhodopsin gene, peroso 3, and GTPS regulated gene on X chromosome. Locus heterogeneity, meaning that mutation at two or more distinct loci can produce the same or similar phenotype. Uh, again, if you have local heterogeneity, one example of this, if we want to talk about uh, that Mendelian, uh, non Mendelian inheritance. Hello? Pleiotropy. What is pleiotropy? Hmm? Hello? Uh, a single gene affects two or more. Uh, the single gene um, produces 
more uh, many um phenotype a secret gene a fat many phenotype fact, uh, okay uh, uh, <laughs> but you look here a success a situation in which mutation at two or more loci can produce the same or similar phenotype so is this pleiotropy no why is that okay you must understand the difference between pleiotropy and um, polygenic okay we touched that during one of our lectures uh, now polygenic inheritance and multifactorial disorders so let's look at example um, so coronary artery disease is increasing in prevalence worldwide we know that you know it has always been like that okay and currently leading mortality industrialized nation and also becoming uh, you know in countries like uh, uh democratic Developing countries like nation. So the disease is partially explained by genetics and it is known to run in families. So this is this is something that you know um, um, very serious. Sometimes we don't know what is it. Sometimes you look at people or especially guys who are really fit and who actually exercises a lot and so on and so forth, and suddenly they just pass away because of um, heart disease. And and sometimes in most cases I heard that they pass away when they're playing football, they involved in um rigorous uh, physical exercises so uh, that is another example because this onset only start early you know you don't wait like people 60 or 80 years old but these are young uh, relatively, relatively young and healthy individuals so that's why um, have you heard those cases where footballers uh, die on the pitch yes yes so you know uh, that is one example where people do not know exactly what is is the onset so that uh, uh, is pinned down to genetics and known to run in families especially when people don't have that kind of disease uh, don't kind of uh, disease history so lifestyle environmental factors such as diet also contribute to coronary artery disease and heart failure so this order shows multifactorial inheritance but because both genetic and environmental factors trigger its onset but what are the distinguishing factors of this and other metaphoric disorders? So over time, the answer to this question has become uh, increasingly clear. Okay. So multifactory disorders, you have mutation in several genes in combination with environmental factors. We look at example last time when you have, um, you can have, inter you always have interactions between genes and other genes and also interaction between genes and environment. When you have a trigger from the environment actually trigger uh, um, that disease. So although multifactory disorders tend to recur in families, they are much more prevalent than single gene disorders. And the difficulty is that they do not show Mendelian patterns of inheritance. So you cannot really pinpoint to one single gene. One single gene. Uh, a lot of other monogenic disorders, you can pinpoint to just one single gene. But when you have this kind of issues, um, multifactory disorders, you can't really pinpoint to which particular gene. And multifactory inheritance is implicated in the etiology of common uh, conditions. So example is congenital malformations, uh, common disorders of adult life, and normal human characteristics. That is we know. So congenital malformation include neurotube defects, uh, the dysplasia of the hips, baric stenosis, left clip, and pedal and congenital heart disease. This is uh, for, for um, uh, infants. Okay. Adult life includes diabetes mellitus, obesity, epilepsy, hypertension, schizophrenia. That's an example. Um, whereas normal human characteristic is blood pressure, height, and uh, dermatoglyphics. So, you know, um, same thing, for example, like height. Um, you have the gene or you have sets of the genes that can actually help you to become tall. Okay, uh, but unfortunately, you do not have uh, sufficient nutrition. Um, even though you are, you have that feature to become tall because insufficient nutrition, which comes from the environment, then you cannot be um, tall or as your gene has determined. Okay. 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 Um, now this is a lot of text, but. Now, if you have a normal distribution curve, when you look at the trade of the population, uh, the whole is identical, but not diagnostic and multiple disorders because the abnormalities do not usually have distinct phenotype, uh, but they are at the extremes of the curve. Okay, when you have normal Gaussian distribution, is you have the, those bell-shaped curve. So the number of genes involved may be very few, 
even when a single locus is implicated. So variation environment uh, can ensure normal distribution of the trait. When we look at twins, and twin studies highlight relative importance of genes and the environment. So for example, cleft lip and palate has a population incidence of one to 1,000, but concordance in monozygotic twins is 40%. So if you do genetics alone, there would be 100% concordance. So genes are important, but met, uh, other factors are also involved. Concordance in this dizygotic twins is 4%. Okay, so these twins are not genetically identical, uh, having an average like also 50% of their genes in common, but they are generally uh, uh, they generally share similar environment, showing the importance of environmental factors. So where the concordance rate both affected, one affected or both affected is 100%. Monozygotic twins are identical, dizygotic twins are non-identical. So you see, even though you are 100%. 100% genetically identical, but the coconut is still 40% because uh, other factors are also involved. And let alone for the genetic twins or non-identical twins, that is even less. Okay, but again, because they share similar environment, that shows in, uh, importance of environmental factors. Now, imagine if you have um, two uh, um, identical twins. Okay, two identical twins, um, but you separate them. And uh, even though they are genetically identical, one, you give, uh, uh, you know, um, good environment and you really fit this particular boy um, really well. Uh, the other one uh, has less. And the other boy goes to the gym also on support and became, you know, very well developed, whereas the other one did not. So you see, that place, that shows that fact, uh, other factors, apart from genetic, plays uh, an important role. But here, if you have a uh, non identical twins, but they live together, uh, you know, as a family, and they eat the same thing, look the same thing, um, that also uh, uh, plays an important role. So remember, when you have this situation, other factors than genetic can also play um, a role in development. So the DDH case is an example of condition of multifactory inheritance. So you have genetic factors and environmental factors. Okay, genetic factors, acetabular dysplasia, this is something to do with your hips, family hips, or fam family general joint laxity, issues with your um, joints. A response to maternal hormone, especially uh, estrogen. Heritability and environmental factors, we're going to cover as an example. So the proportion of the total phenotypic variation that is genetic in origin in a given population, so express as percentage. So the higher values denote the genetic contribution is more important. So if heritability is high, then there's high correlation in relatives. Environmental factors, you have multifactory disorders uh, when environmental factors combine to bring the susceptibility of individual to disease above the threshold value. So reliability that can attribute to genetic factors is fixed, but judicious manipulation of environmental factors may enable reduction in an individual susceptibility to be true value. So I discussed this before, so I'll repeat this again. So when you have environmental factors, you have genetic disposition to develop the disease. But if you know you have that predisposition or risk, but you manipulate your environment so that you will not develop so, then you can control it. So for example, somebody has uh, a predisposition to develop emphysema. Okay, genetic predisposition to develop emphysema, which is inflammation of the lung. If that particular person do not smoke, you don't have that kind of uh, uh, increase before above the threshold value because you don't smoke. But if that particular person is stupid enough to smoke, then you will develop emphysema. Okay, because you have genetic predisposition, but you also introduce the trigger from the environment. <clears throat> Examples of multifactor disorders here, Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> About 10% of patients inherit Alzheimer's disease as a monogenic condition. All of these cases arise from mutation in a myelin precursor protein. So you have uh, on chromosome 21 or from presenilin 1 on chromosome 14. Okay, so mutation in other genes, for example, presenilin 2 uh, uh, on chromosome 1 or APOE on chromosome 19 and alpha synuclein on chromosome 4 is also associated with inherited susceptibility to Alzheimer's disease. So here you have issues where you can inherit as a monogenic condition, but there are other uh, genes involved which give you that predisposition. <coughs> Asthma heritability is about 60%, but 
more than 25 genes, including those listed there, has been associated with asthma pathology and susceptibility. So increasing prevalence of asthma in the developed world has attributed to a changing environmental allergen exposure. So here again, you have uh, a lot of genes which has been associated to uh, development of asthma and or asthmatic attacks in patients. Rheumatoid arthritis, heritability is 60%. Uh, so again, um, you have um, involvement of HLA genes and be shown to strongly associated uh, for rheumatoid arthritis susceptibility. Uh, have you covered genetic polymorphism in your first year? Are you, do you know about genetic polymorphism? Ada belajar tak? About that reflip and so on and so forth. RFLP thing. Hello? Hello? Rasanya tak ada, Doktor. Ha, tak ada? Not sure. Tak ingat. Not ni. sure. Ha, uh, First year tak belajar. Masa uh, pre-university, matrix or uh, asasi tak belajar. Macam mana polymorphism? Ah? Huh? You did not cover genetic polymorphism before? Seriously? Ada atau tak ada? Ataupun you tak ingat? You tak ingat lah apa you belajar? Never mind. So polymorphism, uh, this is important because this is what covers the variation that you see on, on the sequence itself and also what you can see in, 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 in population. So I'm surprised that. I hope you've covered this but you, you covered that. Okay, so microarray studies look at disease discorded monozygotic twins. Now, they've shown that you can still have 800 different gene uh, 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 expression. So this shows that even though you have monozygotic twins, you can still have different expressivity of those different genes related to uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So the most strongly altered expression profile seen among those 800 genes are leverin, dehydrogenase type 2, and cystic rich angiogenic disinducer T1. So these are the genes that being expressed differently uh, in rheumatoid arthritis uh, disease. So even though you have uh, uh, monozygotic twins and they're genetically identical, they can still express differently on in that gene. So subsequent investigation uh, revealed that all three genes were all expressed in joint tissue. Study. So other examples of diseases also include type 1 diabetes mellitus and primary hypertension. Okay, any question? This will be available on uh, Spectrum today so that you can read. Any question? No questions, doctor. No, no questions, doctor. Okay. Right, so no questions. So um, if that is the case, we can uh, stop here. And tomorrow, uh, there will be no class. As you, tomorrow is um, public holiday. i see you again on Wednesday morning. So... Uh, from this point onwards, we have to do a lot of revision, number one. And of course, uh, we still do uh, more um, thicker quizzes. So we have classes uh, Wednesday. We have classes on Monday. And on Tuesday next week is where you have your alternative assessment again. Okay. And then on Wednesday morning, it's more like a wrap up. Do you have um, other assessments next week? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. <laughs> How many? 
Apart from genetic, how many? Two. Two. Three. So, total two three lah. Total three, including genetics. Yes. Ah, uh, What are the other two? Uh, for me, I have medical pathology and uh, human and animal physiology. Same doctor. We all, I think we all take the same three subjects. Uh, most yes. of us. Uh -uh. So, basically, you all are going to have uh, uh, three assessment next week. Next week and this week. Yes. Betul? Yes. Two weeks, yes. Three, three assessments? Yes. I have four. What? I yeah, have what's four. the other one? Oh, I take the uh, earth ecology. Ah? Touch ecology? The SIX one. Uh, elective. Earth ecology. Ah, elective. Also assessment next week. Eh, uh, toxicology, yeah. Which course is that? Earth, doctor. Earth ecology. Earth. Earth ecology. Earth ecology. Earth ecology. Eh, are you a biohealth student? Yes, yes. Uh, why are you taking earth ecology? Uh, why For the elective courses? Health courses. Uh, earth ecology, you belajar apa? Uh, like, like geography. Laja uh, uh, weather, the earthquake, something like that. Oh, well, oh, that's easy, don't you think? Ah, uh, this is with geology uh, department. Easy. I think yeah. Oh, okay. Not sure. Okay, so four is heavy. Even three is heavy. Um. Uh, any any assessment on Monday? I think the three subjects that we have assessment all on Monday and Wednesday. <gasps> eh, tak? Mine is Tuesday. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Monday, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday and yours in uh, Tuesday. Eh, heavy. You all uh, on, on both days. Monday ada apa? Physiology. Huh? Physiology. 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 Uh, Monday, physiology. Wednesday? Same doctor. Same physiology. We have uh, the objective questions one day and the summative will be in the Wednesday. Physiology is with Dr. Sam. Yes, Dr. Uh, yes, Dr. Sam. Oh my god, it's been separated in the same week. Yes, Doctor. Oh my god. At least I am nicer. I separate between seven weeks. Nice that I. Don't you think I'm a nice person? Yes, yes. Doctor. You are. Yes, Doctor, yes. yes. you are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if that is the case, if that is the case, why don't we do this? Um, on Monday, I'm just going to do a very short revision. Uh, so that, what time is your uh, uh, assessment with Dr. Sam? 11, 12 to 1. Huh? On Monday. Apa, apa, apa? 12 to 1, 12, 12 to 1. 12 to 1. Oh my God, you yes, also have doctor. physiology of reproduction with Dr. Sam juga? Uh, no, no uh, Dr. Shida. Dr. Shida. Oh, Dr. Shida. Eh, heavy, yeah, you all. That's heavy. Oh, okay, now everybody. Oh my God, that's heavy. Chronic diseases with Dr. Yati, kan? Yes, Dr. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's like, eh, hey, medical prosthetology, siapa aja? Uh, Dr. Prof. Shina. Dr. Hidayu. Oh, Dr. Hidayu. Okay, okay, so I'm Okay, so if that is okay, that's heavy. Um, I cannot, I don't think it's. I, um, that's heavy for you guys. So you have my attentive assessment is on. Okay, this coming Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, can. Hello? Yes, yes, okay. This coming Wednesday. Hello? Oh, now can hear doctor. Dengar tak? We can now hear you just now. Uh, dengar tak sekarang? Sekarang dengar. 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 So, 
I, I think I'll type this. What if you run, we'll have uh, clicker quizzes. My plan is to run it every other day for the next few days. But because you're going to have it, I'm going to run clicker quizzes all on Wednesday. Can doctor. It's coming Wednesday. So that Monday, I'll give you off. Play. And then Tuesday, jangan yeah. lupa, Tuesday you datang for my assessment and then Wednesday, we just do uh, a very simple wrap up. So that uh, you don't have to worry anything at all. So we get everything clear for genetics this week for your quiz genetic all clear up. And then uh, Monday, no. And then on Tuesday, I run the uh, assessment assessment. On Wednesday, Wednesday, we run a very simple wrap up. And your elite assignment, you can submit after your exam period, no, after your exam period, after your uh, reading period, which is in, which is next month. So you have plenty of time. Boleh? Boleh, 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 Okay, so we do that then. So get ready for your clicker quizzes on, on Wednesday, there will be three. We run all consecutively. Boleh? Otherwise, uh, nanti, hey, I do not understand why there's so much on that week 14. There's so many. At least you, for me, you already got the 50% of your alternative assessment in the back. So you not, don't only concentrate the next 50%, which you must concentrate and focus very well. Boleh, eh? Boleh, doctor. Boleh, doctor. Boleh, doctor. Okay. Yang boleh, boleh. Any objection? Or anybody who say, ah, doctor, that's too much. Or I do not want it that way. Ah, bagi tahu sekarang. Because if you don't say it now, don't send me emails later because it's not fair for your other friends who already said yes. Because if one or two who do not want to say here now and then send me emails or messages later, then I have to bring it back to the class. So if you're not happy with something or you're not, you're not, you're not happy with that particular arrangement, uh, you need to tell now so that all your other friends can also uh, give it back. Ada Okay, that the case, I see you on Wednesday morning and tomorrow is public holiday and for those who are celebrating Thai Pusam, I hope you have a good celebration tomorrow. Um, I see you again on Wednesday morning. Boleh? Okay, okay doctor. doctor. Okay. Okay. Jangan stress eh. Please do not stress up yourself. This is part and parcel of study. So, no, I know there's a lot of exams but <laughs> if I want, if you want, if it makes you feel better, when I did my first degree, and um, our exams is uh, are not packaged like you. You have only one uh, today and then uh, uh, tomorrow and then maybe one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Mine, for example, they, they, they couple it in, 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 they couple it together. So, for example, I have one paper for one and a half hours and I have one paper for one and a half hours. All the papers at that time is about one and a half hours. So, you have to answer very fast. But the challenging part is that they tend to couple it up together. So, uh, if I sit for one exam in the morning, uh, I will sit for three hours for two subjects in one sitting. So, in three hours, I have to answer two courses. That can be very troubling because uh, I remember one year I had four papers in one day, two in the morning and two in the afternoon. So in six hours, I answered four modules or four courses. I remember one year, it was quite challenging because um, in that one sitting, I have something to do with plans. And then the following paper, the same paper in the same sitting, I have something to do with inventory biology. So my head have to switch very fast. There's no gap in between. So when they ask you to sit for the exam, you sit for three hours, they give you both exam papers. So it's really up to you which one you want to answer first. Okay. And at that time, unlike in UM that you can still, you know, uh, the boost C minus and so on and so forth, my university didn't allow that at all. If you actually fail one course, uh, you fail. And you fail one course and you will not get any honours degree. And even if you repeat, uh, this is something different than UM. UM, that time, if you repeat, you can still get the highest mark there. If you repeat, if I repeat that course, if I scored, if I, first I fail, and the second time I scored 95%, they will cap it at 50%. Because 50% is the uh, passing grade. 
So even though I score one hundred percent or ninety five percent, they will still pack it at uh fifty uh, percent, which is the passing grade, and I won't get honors. So you see, that was very stressful at the time. But <laughs> I noticed that you know there's no point of being stressful. I remember one day we have our housemate. We all got really stressed because we know we have exams next following morning. So it was like already two o'clock in the morning, two a.m. And then by two thirty, we all went out in a car together and shopping at Tesco. <laughs> so we like three sisters, we shop at Tesco, buy a lot of ice cream, we eat. The morning at the clock, we go for exam. So I don't want you to get stressed. This is part and parcel of being a student. Exam is not for them to make you stress. Exam is to bring out the best in you. So don't take it like too much, less stressful, and so on and so forth. This is part and parcel of being a student. Boleh? Okay, so you need to stay positive and take this like you know an opportunity to bring out the best in you number one and number two most of this is attentive assessment so we're trying our best to help our students uh if it's face-to-face -face exam uh that that is a different dimension at all okay so i see you wednesday um have a good rest tomorrow Thank you, doctor. 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 Right, wait. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, but because like uh, I just noticed. Uh, Krista, Chris, I think we need to have another four, can not another three, can. Apa dia? Clicker quiz. We supposed to have another four quiz, can. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, check. Because yeah, you said just now this Wednesday we uh, finish all three. I think we are uh, we just done. Ah yes yes yes. We have another four then because uh, we so have seven in total and you already read done three again. Yes. So this uh, Wednesday all four lah kan? Four. All right. Nak tambah satu tak? <laughs> Five. Oh, jangan, jangan. Okay okay. All uh, all four. That's correct. I always thought we've done all four, but okay, never mind. Four is okay. So all four, we have enough time. Okay, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honey, for that. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.